Hello class, in this quick video I'm going to review the uh, solutions to what I consider the advanced to the more advanced problems that we could expect to see on our thermochemistry exam tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, the first one deals with thermochemical equations and being able to use the energy aspect into it uh, with the stoichiometry. So let's take a look at the first part here. It says the combustion of methane releases 890 kilojoules per mole. Write a complete and balanced thermochemical thermochemical equation for the combustion of methane. So the first thing you got to remember is, well, what is combustion? And bam, there they are. Um, first of all, what is combustion? Remember, combustion is a reaction that is always involves a fuel, and in this case, the fuel is methane. Um, it's always, oxygen will always be a reactant, O2, gas, and uh, the products will always be water, uh, vapor form, and CO2 in this case. So these are both uh, correct and acceptable thermochemical equations. One of them has it written in the fact that it's going to give off 890 kilojoules as a product. The other one just has it written as a side that the change in enthalpy is negative 180, uh, one, negative 180, negative 890, excuse me, kilojoules of energy. Uh, the fact that this is written on the product side and the fact that this is negative tells us that this is an exothermic reaction. So the second part of this equation or question asks how much heat would be released in the combustion of 40 grams of methane? So uh, we don't have any information explicitly in these equations in terms about grams, but we, do can, we can read them um, in terms of recipes or stoichiometry. So we know that there's a relationship by reading these equations, and I'll use the top one, that there's uh, one mole of methane, right? That's what the coefficient means if it's not there, is related to uh, one times this much energy. So there's that relationship, and that might be how I'm going to start then my dimensional analysis to solve this problem. Uh, I know that there are 890 kilojoules released uh, for every one mole of methane combusted. So the next step is to determine the molar mass of methane. So we could use a periodic table that would be available to you. Uh, this one's pretty simple to do though. One mole of methane, CH4, is equivalent to 16 grams of methane. It's DH4 there in that case. Right, because carbon is 12, and then we're just adding four hydrogens, which are one, so 12 plus four would be 16. And to finish this off, how many grams are we dealing with? We're talking about 40 grams of methane, so 40 grams of CH4. So we'll look at the dimensional analysis. Grams of methane cancels grams of methane. Mole of methane cancels mole of methane and our answer will be in kilojoules. So I've carried that out mathematically. We should get this. 2,225 kilojoules of energy will be released when we combust 40 grams of methane. All right, let's look at the second problem. Uh, the thermochemical equation for the reaction of ammonium hydroxide and barium chloride is described by the following thermochemical equation. So uh, here we have our reactants, uh, ammonium chloride and barium hydroxide. And they undergo a chemical reaction which re, um, creates barium chloride, ammonia gas, and water in that case. I did this one in class, if you remember. This is where I was uh, able to mix these things in a beaker on a wet piece of paper or cardboard, and it froze to the paper. So this is uh, an endothermic reaction. And how do we know it's endothermic? One of the clues is that delta H is a positive value in that case. And what does that mean, a positive value? It means that the energy of the products is higher than that of the initial reactants. So the final minus the initial is a positive value. Delta H is greater than zero. Remember, that's what we're looking at is the change in energy between products and reactants. So delta H is positive. It has to be endothermic. I think I said that the first time. It is endothermic. Um, and then we could also write the equation uh, this way. Okay, so there's the equation, and the only difference is uh, from the exothermic reaction that we saw with methane on the last slide is this is endothermic. So we might write the thermochemical equation with the energy aspect uh, in the reactant side. So this says that 58.8, 54.8 kilojoules.
go into the equation or the reactants absorb that much energy um, and turning into the products. So let's look at the second part of the question. If 13 grams of barium hydroxide react, react with excess ammonium chloride, how much energy will be absorbed or released? Really similar to the stoichiometry that we did uh, on the last slide. So here's the dimensional analysis uh, that we're looking at. And again, we realize that there's a stoichiometric relationship between one mole of barium hydroxide will produce one times 54.8 uh, kilojoules of energy. If I did two moles, then I would produce two times 54.8 uh, energy. I need that much energy for the reaction to proceed. So here's the dimensional analysis. Um, here's what we get from the stoichiometry, kilojoules. Um, moles, and we'll just watch what cancels. Moles of barium hydroxide cancels moles of barium hydroxide. I know from the periodic table uh, that one mole of barium hydroxide has 171 grams, of, um, and then we're dealing with 13 grams. So grams of barium hydroxide cancels that. And if my calculator, if I put those numbers in correctly, we should have about 4.2 kilojoules. And then how would we answer this? Released or absorbed? This is absorbed. So this much energy goes into the reactants. It would have to come from the surroundings. And that means the surroundings would cool down. And, and in the demonstration we did in class, we pulled it out of the wet cardboard. So the wet cardboard actually uh, cooled enough to freeze to the beaker itself. And the last one, uh, this is a change of phase, a heating curve type problem. On the camping trip, ice must be melted for drinking water. How much energy is required to melt one liter, that would be 1,000 grams of ice, um, at a temperature of negative 3 Celsius and heat it to 90 degrees Celsius to make hot chocolate? So you always want to keep in, in, in mind what the graph looks like because that literally tells you the steps you're going to need to make uh, to change uh, the phases and, and, and heat things or cool things. Cool things. So let's think about where we're starting. We're starting with snow or ice at negative 3 degrees Celsius. That might be somewhere right about there, right, below zero. So then we have three steps that we have to do. We actually have to warm the ice up to zero before it will melt. So we got to take it there, and that's given by this mathematics. So once it's there, we have to change its phase. So I have to take it from the solid phase to the liquid phase, we have to introduce or give it the latent heat of fusion. And that much energy is given by this mathematics. And then finally, it's all melted, it's liquid, but it's zero degrees. It's a very cold drink. We are going to have to heat it to 90 degrees to make hot chocolate. So that would be like somewhere around here. We have to warm the pure liquid phase in that case. And that's given by this mathematics. Pretty much everything is already done for us. These are what our answers uh, will be. Uh, just to warm the ice to get it ready to melt should take about 6,300 joules of energy to do that. And remember, this is the specific heat of ice or solid water. The next one, there is a, a step that we need to, to make. We need to know the number of moles that we're dealing with. Some quick dimensional analysis can easily find the number of moles. We know that there are, is one mole uh, of water is 18 grams of water, and we're dealing with 1,000 grams of water. So the dimensional analysis should give us uh, something that looks like we're dealing with about 55.6 moles of H2O. So we put that number in here, 55.6, squeeze in there, mole. And when we do that, 55.6 times the latent heat of fusion, we'd give that, give that value to you or be it in a table. Uh, that should give us 334,156 joules. And then the heating of the water. We've done so many times with calorimetry. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. We're dealing with 1,000 grams of water and we're changing its temperature from 0 to 90 degrees. So we put those values in, and we should find that takes 376,200 joules. So the total amount of energy to melt this ice and heat it up to 90 degrees is going to be all of those added together, um, 6,300 this number and this number, and when I check my number, my arithmetic, the answer should be 
716,656. That's what's going to do it. Okay.